Please escort this suspect for interrogation. Tell me, Mr. Hurtley, what were you doing at Woodman's Lee? Woodman's Lee? I've never been there. The second pair of boots that you had with you when you were arrested perfectly match the footprints found near the cabin where Peter Carey was murdered. Footprints? That's your proof? How many men have boots like mine? That doesn't make me a murderer. The presence at Woodman's Lee has been proven. Would you care to explain it? I don't remember. What would I be doing there anyway? Because you are the gardener at Woodman's Lee. I'm not. How did you... I observed your hands. They told me that you worked with the earth. Small fragments of plants snagged to your trousers indicate that you were mowing very recently. But the most obvious clue presented itself in the bird embroidered on your handkerchief. A crested tit, if I'm not mistaken. All right, all right, you got me. Yes, I am a gardener, and I went there to get my tools. That's all for now. Hurtley's stories are false leads, but now I know one thing for certain. I must examine the site where the garden tools are kept at Woodman's Lee. Madam, we have information that the valuable stolen papers are hidden amongst the garden tools here at Woodman's Lee. We need to find them. Oh, my. Our tools are kept inside the shed that's right behind me. Here is the key to open it. Does the name Liam Hurtley mean anything to you? No, I don't know anyone by that name. Is this your husband's tobacco pouch? I'm not sure. It might be. But he hadn't smoked in a very long time. Thank you, madam. Let's see what could be hidden here.
Let us see what is in this box. bundle of letters in a woman's hand with the Carey family monogram. Hertley and Mrs. Carey were in a relationship. That is interesting. I am aware of your affinity with Liam Hurtley. Oh, what are you talking about? Mrs. Carey, we found your letters. My letters? I asked Liam to return them to me. I wanted to burn them. Why did Mr. Hurtley put them inside the garden shed? I don't know. I wanted them back, but I couldn't see him, not after what happened. Well, here they are. Oh, this is terrible. Terrible. Liam, how could he? I... after what he has done. You believe that he killed your husband? No, I do not know. I do not know. Leave me alone. Thank you, madam. I wonder if Wiggins has managed to find any sailors. Leave me alone, please.
inside Peter Carey's cabin. I, I... I was trying to find some information about my father. I assume you had another purpose, to retrieve the bond certificates. Am I correct? Yes. I discovered some time ago that a few of the missing securities had reappeared on the London market. You can imagine my amazement. I spent months trying to find them, and at last I discovered that the original seller had been Captain Peter Carey. These papers, they belong to my family, but I could not find them there. That's all for now. Well, I will see you soon, young man. I'm not saying another word. Mr. Holmes, we found the sailors from that list you gave us. Well done, Wiggins. Let me see. This is interesting. Let us review the other sailors now. This man is a harpooner and his initials are P.C., the same initials that were found on the tobacco pouch. Wiggins, could you gather some information on one of the sailors that you found? His name is Patrick Cairns. We found Patrick Cairns. Good job, Wiggins. Where is he? He lives in a small furnished dump of a room, but he's always at the Sea Witch Pub, where he does arm wrestles for money and drinks. Excellent. Here is your reward. Two guineas. Thank you, sir. If I wish to speak to Cairns without alarming him, I had better dress as a sailor. What should we do next, Holmes? I can't leave here dressed like this. can't leave here dressed like this. Now I can approach Cairns and see if he recognizes the pouch.
Hello there. Are you Cairns? What do you want? Well, you've heard all about the gambling and arm wrestling here. You seem like the likely sort, and I'm up for it. I start at ten shillings. Suits me. That's the arm that killed a hundred whales. Care to lose another ten shillings? I'm ready to try again. Fine. If you want me to take all your money, no problem with that. You were lucky. I wasn't focused. Let's go again. Ah, I've had enough. You're too strong. Come back later when you can use your arms again. <laughs> I've had enough. You're too strong. Come back later when you can use your arms again. <laughs>
Well, good for you, I reckon. You're stronger than you look. Here's your ten shillings. I'd like to buy you a drink. Good winner as well. That's good. Let's have a drink. You're a good type. Seems you've managed to settle down in life. You've got money, eh? Not all that much. Oh well. At least you're not as poor as me. Why do you say poor? You're not working. I'm a harpooner, but you see, the whalers are rare. They don't pay much. So as a result, I'm a A harpooner. Interesting. You've had a lot of adventures, I bet. Ah, of course. It's been a dozen years since I've sailed. I've seen everything. Old Wallace, damn Black Peter, Great Roger. We sailed to the Cape of Good Hope. Black Peter, you say? I've heard rumours about that one. He was the worst of them all. He was a liar, and violent too. Swinging those fists of his around. He was a tyrant, and not much of a captain. At least, not as good as Great Roger. I see. Yes. I was told terrible tales about Black Peter. But you ain't heard the worst. Tell me, and let's have another drink. It was in 1883 that it happened. The August of that year. Peter Carey was captain of the Sea Unicorn. And I was a spare harpooner. We were coming out of the ice pack on our way home. One evening, we saw a little craft that had been blown north. There was only one man on her, and he wasn't a sailor. The crew must have thought that she'd foundered, and they made for the Norwegian coast in the dinghy. I guess they all drowned. We took the man on board. And who was he? I don't know. During the crossing, he and the skipper enjoyed some long talks. His baggage is just a tin box. That's strange enough. Aye, even stranger was that on the second night, he disappeared. Nobody knew what happened to him. And of course, nobody could ask Black Peter about it. You know what happened, don't you? I do. I saw the skipper tie his heels and push him over the rail in the middle of my watch on that dark night, two days before we sighted the Shetland Lights. Black Peter's a murderer. Aye, and those that know him wouldn't be surprised to hear it, but all this must stay between us, all right? Of course. Back in a second, I move to the Kazi. I'll be here with my drink. Here it is. <laughs> Have you got any tobacco? We've run out of mine. Nah, I lost my pouch. I don't know where. Wait a minute. What's this? Oh, is this your tobacco pouch? Well, uh, oh, it is. Well, I have to go now. I know a captain who's planning an expedition to Cape Cod. Captain Ahab's his name. He commanded the Pequod. He might need good harpooners. I'll tell him about you. Maybe. 
if you like, I. I'm done here. It's time to leave. Good afternoon. I must be at the wrong address. I'd like to speak with a ship's captain, a Captain Ahab. Is that you? No. My name is Sherlock Holmes. That detective fella? So, you wanted to see me? That is correct. We need to talk. About what? About Black Peter, who was killed in his own hut with a harpoon. You know. Don't you? Yes. How? The tobacco pouch. You recognized it. Oh, the sailor. It was you. Unbelievable. Well, fine. I confess. But if you really do know everything, you should also know that I didn't want to kill him. He made me do it. I know. Did you know about this story with the bond certificates? Did you need money? Yeah. I just wanted him to cough up a little silver. I'm out of work, and I thought maybe he could help me. Well, he refused outright, and he insulted me. I reminded him I knew all about that murder he committed at sea in 1883. Then he got mad when I spoke about his treasure. I barely just had time to throw the harpoon at him before he could jump at me with his knife. You know the truth. What will you do now? I ask that you return the bond certificates. Keep some of them. You will need them in your exile. It is better that you leave the country for a few years. And you won't say anything to the police? I will not say anything as long as you return the money. Well, I'll do as you ask. What about Inspector Lestrade? I will deal with him. Goodbye. It's good that you asked me to come, Mr. Holmes. We do need to talk. About what? What do you mean? Our case, Mr. Holmes. You sent me a message via your little thug. His name is Wiggins, Inspector. Telling me that the case is solved. Well, Mr. Holmes, tell me, who is our murderer, and where is he? The morgue. Eh? His name is, or rather was, Pablo Coventrao. He was also on the ship with Peter Carey, and he was a harpooner. I'll tell you everything, Inspector, but do calm down. Mrs. Hudson will bring us tea and orange cake. Orange cake? You're spoiling me, Mr. Holmes. That's my favourite. Ah, Mr. Holmes. Inspector Lestrade told me that I should thank you for clearing my name. He also said that you were waiting for me here. I came as fast as I could. I cannot thank you enough. It is all because of you that this nightmare is finally over. I believe that this belongs to you. My father's securities? Incredible! But how did you get them? It would take far too long to explain. Tell me. This is extraordinary. You are a genius. Then that may serve as an explanation. Goodbye, Mr. Nelligan, and good luck. Goodbye, Mr. Holmes, and thank you. A thousand times thank you.